Welcome back to a very British space program. You find us a flying over the Australian outback again in the the Winkle, the White Arrow One Ear. We have Carol Freeman piloting, and I'm doing this live, and I'm, I'm trying to focus while I'm doing it. I'm just checking my intakes because I'm I'm going to make sure that I close the intakes this time. Or I'm going to try to before we actually activate the jet. So we're we're gonna. Oh, yep, good. Um, yeah, okay. That started. I thought it actually started before. It hasn't. Okay. So we're going to uh, get up to speed and then we're going to do this rocket plane contract. So please join me. Right. We're just uh, activating the big engines. We've shut off the, uh, the Derwent. We're just going to head up there. Um, this was an airdrop. Uh, mission so I have done it I've done air release on this one and oh, it's got a wonk it's actually flying a bit differently having not taken off I wonder if the fuel balance is wrong for it now I actually just need to take an edge off it but it, it should be sorting itself now it's very odd actually um, so we've got the air intakes the the, uh, the engine I'm gonna try and turn the engine on when this is finished I think and and go and bring it back around to to base and try and land it near base but I don't know I might give up on that um, so, uh, yeah, this is the rocket plane contract. I have to get to at least 12.5 kilometers and exceed 320 meters per second. So we're climbing, we're getting there. Hold on a second. Why does it say it's not a rocket plane? Maybe you have to get, maybe, may, ah, maybe you just have to get the others and then it'll go, yes, it is a rocket plane. And to check that it's actually all done before it does the rocket plane check. Right. Okay, so we're getting up there. We're doing. We're definitely going to do the right speed and the right height. I think it's about whether we do them at the right time. Do they have to be at the same time? Yeah. So I have to have 320 between those. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Sorted. Wonderful. Right. We level out. Uh, let's just see if we can go a little bit faster now. I've got a bit of fuel to burn. I really need to. The only problem with actually the way this is working is it's showing me the total fuel for the craft, not the fuel for the actual rocket engine. So it makes it look as though I've got 7 million delta V left, when in actual fact um, I've actually got like a few hundred. Um, so this is going to probably run out soon. Is it? I feel as though it should be running out soon. I'm. I don't know if I want to go too high or if I want, I want to go higher because then I can slow down better because I'm actually getting quite fast right now. I'm a little worried. Do I just shut the engines? Do I just shut the engines? No, keep going. Let's let's see. I'm not getting any overheating or anything at the moment. And this cockpit is rated until a reasonable altitude and it should tell me if it's going to kill me and I can get back down. And it, it's got big wings so I can just go against the airflow and, and really zero out my velocity if I need to. But we're... Okay. There, it's, it's gone. <laughs> right, time to glide down. I should probably speedy that bit up. Um, yeah, so I will see you after my speedy up bit. So past me at this point was just basically letting it glide up. Um, I did not notice um, that the contract had not been completed at this point. Um, because this is not a rocket plane, because it has a jet engine on it, even though it does have rocket engines. But... Let's get back to me for, yeah, it wobbled a lot. Let me get back to me to the landing because this was an interesting one. Right, this is very twitchy at the moment. Um, a lot twitchier than it was last time. I wonder whether it's just the extra energy in from the, the rocket engines taking it higher and faster. Um, we've, we've got to our, our maximum altitude and yeah, I'm coming down. It's still a lot of speed in this, um, and I actually probably need to pull out at some point soon. I think we just need to maybe um, no, let it go down. Let it get thicker atmosphere and we'll probably get some bite. I don't want to. I don't want to jar it too quickly. Um, so it's it's definitely slowing down. We're going to be far. Whoa. What what the? Well, there's a tail fin. I'm still going forward. I'm not falling. Um, I've got I've got landing here because that's on the body of the craft, so I can land it. I don't know if I can glide it down. No, it's going to turn into a rock at some point. We're using lifting body effector right now, are we? I have developed the first lifting body craft in the world. That's interesting. The Brit no, that, I don't believe that was historic. Um, although I have got terrible handling. This is rolling really badly. Um, I wonder if the gears will help. I've got yeah, just parachute it. Just parachute it. I I'm really worried actually about this. 
because I have not I have not used the parachutes on this um, but I think this is a perfect occasion Carol you've broken my plane seriously what's going on right it's actually just sheared the wings off so it must have been just the foot I'd barely pulled up I was trying to <laughs> right note to self big wings fast speed yeah I, I think I was subsonic when I started to move yeah because it was it was it was it was about 300 meters per second so it was definitely getting down there and I barely touched it and it just pulled them off so big wings too too much too much for big wings okay so we need to reduce that in future I don't really know what to do with this craft now though in that case I was going to use the engine to fly back to base but I think we're going to end up oh there's the wings back there that's brilliant oh the wings are still in the air flying um right um well carol i think you're probably going to be okay um uh we could we could drive you back to base do you want to drive back to base or should you just send someone to pick you up um you've had a bit of an, in an issue there i'm not entirely sure if i trust you flying any more planes that was um different um yeah so this didn't happen in the uh the miles 52 because it never got built and yeah well I think that's one record that uh, that Eric Brown, Mr. Winkle himself, did not have, which was landing a plane without wings. Um, well done, Carol. Um, I think we need to redesign that, don't you? Yeah. Let's uh, let's do something about that. <laughs> All right. To make myself feel a little bit better, we will do this uh, biological sample contract. We've got a rocket ready for it, so let's just get that done. I think. So 100 kilometers. Um, yeah. Is it? Uh, yeah. It's 100. 100 kilometers I've got everything I need um, yeah let's go and nice all right so we're just gonna head up and this is a pretty boring flight isn't it just going straight up wonderful dippity doo dah dippity day um, yeah this this is I'm, I'm still shocked from the previous flight <laughs> Uh, this is actually this is actually about five ten minutes after it landed, and I'm still giggling at the at the thing. What I will say is I don't think it finished the contract, but I need to go back and check. Um, yeah, well, let me just focus on this first. So um, we're just going to go up. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. This is going to be a nice little sample return, it's very much like our last one. So uh, I'll see you in a little bit. So we're just speeding up time now, and you can have the pleasure of past future me me future past me i don't know which where is yeah this was this was a really nice mission actually it was get to 100 kilometers um if i'd have been thinking i'd have probably actually planned and aimed to go over 100 kilometers um i didn't i should have because we could have got some science from from outside of the uh, atmosphere however we do need to collect biological samples from from high in 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 the atmosphere so it's a win-win really for us we're not losing anything um as always the you know the, the rockets run really well i have yet to go get a, an engine failure um which is actually terrifying me we detach the the upper stage and let this component go up on its own uh, to, to be fair i could have had the nose cone detached but i think i wanted to hold on to it because i needed that sounding payload and i don't know if the contract would complete if that sounding the the sounding payload was was lost or the scientific pillar, I can't remember which one it is. Anyway, uh, because it is a part of the contract requirement to have that extra sort of payload there to act like the equipment. So we go up, we come all the way down. We don't we don't go into space. Um, interestingly, because of the the weight of the um, avionics unit at the moment, it actually will go avionics first, even though there's a pointy end at the end, which is really good. I was actually worried that we were going to come in pointy end first and not slow down very quickly, but it's sort of sort of self stabilized itself blunt body approach and uh yeah the parachutes open you can hear the rockets uh, crashing in the background the remnants of it that's that's not the first time that's happened um we're waiting for the parachutes of course yeah, i've rescaled them at this time so they're actually opening at a reasonably sensible time we're slowing down they're opening and giving us a lovely little drop there so we're not going to be hanging around in the uh, in the air anymore which is nice maybe i was a little late on it because you know 200 meters i I do have to sort of balance out the need for speed with the safety measure and that that could have gone wrong if the parachutes were a little slower opening um, but it, it, it's all gone well it's a nice simple contract it gives us some money because we need to put some new wings on our on our plane don't we and that's gonna be fun so here it is the white arrow one air winkle um, 
we're not going to just we, I could just take its wings and put new wings on but I think we've identified quite significantly from the um, from all of this that uh, those wings although they're great for taking off um, high speed probably not a great idea so what am I going to do with it well there were plans for rocket planes in in, in Britain but um, we're gonna we're gonna modify our design I should probably take the whole thing and bin it but we've got a nice fuselage and I don't want to waste it so we rename it to the uh, the 2a Cochrane we take off that Derwent engine because that's gonna be no use to us anymore and we're gonna stick a four 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 gamma engines on the back so this is like uh, four, in my mind it's like uh, four of the um, Spectre engines that were actually developed um, we're going to call it the Cochrane. Now, Cochrane, uh, Johnny Cochrane was a British test pilot who actually flew on Concorde. He flew the first British Concorde um, as the uh, as the co-pilot. He'd previously flown in Squadron 617, which is basically was known as the Dam Busters. If you haven't watched the movie, please watch it. It's a brilliant movie. Um, and he was responsible, and this is the reason I've chosen the name. He was responsible for the the the, the testing of the the speed limits of Concorde. He is the man that, that flew Concorde to its maximum limit. Um, so you see, I take the wings that we actually had for the uh, the original craft, and we're actually going to scale them just down a bit. We're just going to make them narrower because we don't need all that lift. This is not going to take off from the runway. We're going to use some air launches for this. Um, in an ideal world, those those gamma engines would be throttleable, um, but they weren't. The gamma engines were never designed to be throttleable. And if I had installed or I'd in, in brought in some Spectre engines, even the early Spectre engines were not throttleable either. Um, I will possibly bring some Spectre engines into the into the save later on, but they did not become become throttleable until probably around the period of orbital rocketry, and so. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to impose myself a limit, which is I'm not going to allow myself to use the Spectre engines or anything like that until I have got to basically orbital rocketry because they are very good engines. They, you know, they some of them could burn for seven minutes. Some of them were they were throttleable. They could burn for seven minutes. You know, it was staggering design. Um, from the the previous uh, craft and and so forth, you will probably have noticed um, lots of fuel left in the tanks. And we were using that for the HTP driven engines. That's okay, and we can talk about that. Right, so um, the contract did not complete from the first uh, wing falling mission. And I'm guessing it's because it needs to just have a rocket engine. So this one should fix that problem, fingers crossed and all that. Let's, let's get going. Right, we have just been released. We're firing our engines, and I'm gonna speed you. This is actually post me speeding this up because I want to speed this whole mission up just as a, as a full launch. So this is our first true rocket plane. You can see its shape is a lot more streamlined. It has a lot less resistance, and you can see on the horizon there some debris, which I believe is the wings from our first plane. Um, so they're, they're actually gonna stay there. I wonder, I think as you uh, increase your um, your technology you can launch further and further away from your launch site but at the moment I think we're going to be flying over them every time we do rocket launches which is going to be quite amusing a nice little marker actually so we're just leveling out we've got to a nice altitude we've 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 achieved all we require for the rocket plane contract that was easy and this thing is going to keep going so that we're now going three times faster than the than the the white arrow one here um, this is a much faster craft. This is this is actually um, a little scary, actually, at the time. All four engines. We're carrying no extra fuel. We're just doing this, and we're getting a bit of re a little bit of heating on the on the airframe there. Um, yeah, we've developed that roll again. This this roll approach that was from the original White Arrow. Um, interesting. This craft actually flew better when you were upside down and trying to slow down, which was an interesting approach to it. I'm getting heating on the cockpit though, and that, that does worry me because uh, we have a lot of speed to lose still. And um, Carol, Carol's not great. Carol, Carol broke my last plane, and I would rather she didn't die for it. Now, that cockpit is still very hot. So what we're actually doing is I, I do some spins. I actually try to turn out of out of direction of travel just to try and lose speed. So we, we've actually managed to drop it down to 700 there, but we're still quite high, which is good. The um, 
the actual temperature bar is not the most accurate and the color of the cockpit is very very lightly colored so so that that suggests to me it's, it's about to explode so i'm just trying to bleed off as much speed as possible it is not dissipating heat at the rate i would really like my concern is we've built a rocket plane that goes really fast but then cooks the pilot um, and i'm not sure the best way to deal with that because even if i upgrade this cockpit at the next tech level all i think it does is make it have the ability to go higher so um yeah that's a concern for me right so we're going to come in for a landing it actually looks as though it's cooling down now um i think i'd love to, be able to see it but anyway um it looks as though it's cooling down it's going to the darker darker red we're going to bring it down i'd rather not land in the water though and this is because i've made those wings a little smaller i don't seem to have the cross range that i used to have and it's I'm really fighting to actually get it to um to actually pull up at this point um to be fair it's only nine nine kilometers up you know there's there's a lot of distance still to go if we were over mountains we'd probably concerned but here we've only got about 100 meters of actual ground to worry about so yeah it could be worse so we're just going to try and glide as far as we can over the water. I don't really want to land in the water. Um, this is going to be something to take into account in future that we've got this body of water between us and the, and the actual landing strip. So I'm either going to have to ditch before or after um, in future. Uh, I don't want to land in the water if I can avoid it. I have still got the parachutes on this craft and this is the, basically the same fuselage that we've, we've flown before in the, in the one air. The Cochrane is very much a cannibalized craft and I should probably have actually, you know, in reality have created a new one, but the British are quite ingenious at reusing stuff. So we, we bank upwards quite a lot there just to lose a lot of speed because I want to just, I've now decided this is this is where I am. I'm now past the water. I don't need to worry about getting past the water. We can lose a lot of the speed and energy now. So we've just drained that off. We're going to come in for our landing. And because Carol is the expert of the parachutes, I pulled the parachutes. Um, I will be honest with you, after the last craft coming down, I just wanted to get one down fully. Um, I was thinking of the landing and I thought, yeah, we've got the landing gear that will work for it. But yeah, Carol, Carol's not got a great history so far. So just getting the full plane back is fine. The other thing is, you know, I just want to make sure that the plane actually is landable with parachutes because this this was a gentle flight. This craft is going to have to do some more extreme flying and uh, the parachutes are likely to be needed there, if, particularly if I rip the wings off again. You see it come down. It's not entirely flat, but it's not too bad. So we're just going to pop it down and we're done. So from me and from Carol, who has finally landed a craft with actual wings attached to it, we will probably be ending it there. I wish you all the best and I'll see you next time.